Welcome to this video dealing with factors and prime factors, primarily related for year six, but it should be useful to anyone in later years, just as a recap. So I suppose the important question is, what on earth is a factor? Well, a factor is a number that will divide into another number. So, for example, let's look at the number 10. What numbers can I divide into there a whole number of times? Right Now I suppose you could argue that any number can divide in, but the important point here is it's got to go in a whole number of times. Now, most people tend to say, oh, oh, two, two. Yes, two is certainly a factor, but it's not the most obvious of factors. And when you try and come up with these things, you tend to want to try and work out an order. So I think the most obvious factor, and there's one that goes into every single number, is the number one. So there's number two. What about the next one? Well, I normally work up and go, well, does three go in? Nope, because 10 is not in the three times table. Four, nope, 10 is not in the four times five table, but five is. And six, no, seven, no, eight, no, nine, no, 10, yes. So there we go. So I now have the factors of 10 as being one, two, five, and 10. One, two, five, and 10. Yep, those are the only numbers that divide in to 10. What about 12? Well, the number one is now a given. You can always write that down as a factor. Remember, factors are generally smaller than the number they've given to, or smaller than or equal to the number they've given you. So one is there, two is definitely there, three divides into 12, four does, five doesn't, six does. 7 doesn't, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, 10 doesn't, 11 doesn't, 12 does. So there we go, so there's 12. And you may have noticed that actually once I got to 6, which was halfway, there was very little point in really thinking about any other numbers. Um, one more over here, I think. Um, what about 18? Yep, the numbers 1 and 2 and 3 go into 18. 3, 6, 9, 12, 18. Yep, 3 goes in. There's 4. Nope. Five, nope, six does, seven, eight, nine does, and 18 does, because you know nine was halfway, I didn't need to go too much further. Now, at the moment I'm just counting through the numbers in my head, but is there an easier way of doing this? Well, maybe there is, let's have a look. Let's go back to number 18. We had one and two, and three, and six, and nine, and 18. I'm still running through those things in my head, but if I look at each of these numbers, what I tend to notice is I've got pairs. I've got one and 18, two and nine, three and six. So I've got one and 18, two and nine, three and six. What happens if I put a times between each of these? Well, 1 times 18 is 18, 2 times 9 is 18, and 3 times 6 is 18, and lo and behold, I've just become a little bit cleverer. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. These are called factor pairs. They are two numbers that, when multiplied together, are factors of a number. Right? That seems a bit silly, but let's have a look at the number 20, for example. What I'm going to now do is rather than write them in a list, I'm going to start looking at factor pairs. Well, 1 must go with 20, because 1 times 20 is 20. 2, well, must go with 10, because 2 times 10 is 20. 3, no, 4, yep, 4 times 5. I actually don't need to go any further, because what I've now done is I've counted all the numbers I need to. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. And we tend to think of this in maths as something like a horseshoe. So if we imagine going around the numbers like that, it looks a little bit like a horseshoe. So I have the factors of 20 as now being 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. How about another example? Maybe we'll use the number 36. Let's look at 36. All right, so we've got 1 and 36. 2 goes into that 18 times, 3 goes into that 12 times, 
four goes into it eight times, five, no, six, yeah, six goes into it six times. Well, I'm not going to write six and six because that would be a bit silly. So what we tend to do is write the six in the middle. We'll come back to why six is written in the middle in a moment. But there we go. I now have my completed horseshoe. And so I can write the factors of 36 as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 18, and 36. Ooh, one more. Something a bit more complicated. Let's look at the number 90. Is that going to be complicated? Well, let's have a look. 1 and 90, because those two multiply together. 2 and 45, yep. 3. 3 times 30, yep. 4. Now, does 4 go into 90? Nope. 5 certainly does. 5 goes into 90. Ooh, how many 5s are in 90? 1, 18 times. 6. Does 6 go into 90? Yep. 6 goes in 15 times. 6, 7. Nope. Does 8? Nope. 9 does. 9 and 10. And there we go. I once again now have my horseshoe, sorry about my bad drawing, but the factors of 90 are now 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 15, 18, 30, 45, and 90. So remember, a factor is a number that divides in. Now, in a previous video, we were looking at the idea of prime numbers. And if you think about it, prime numbers are such that they only have two factors. And if we look at, um, what's our prime number? If we look at the number 7, all right, what are the factors of 7? They are just 1 and 7. There are only two numbers that go into 7. If we look at the number 8, we have 1, 2, 4, and 8. And again, I could have done that like this. I could have done 8 with 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. But sometimes it's easier just to write them out. And what about the number 9? Yep, 1 and 3 and 9. Ooh, and 10 and 10 we've already done is 1 and 2 and 5 and 10. And the number 11 has only got 1 and 11. So, again, this is a great way of finding out which numbers are prime numbers. Because this here has only two factors. And what about the number 11? It has two factors. So anything with just two factors must be prime. Right? Remember, the number 1 is not prime. Now, having worked out what a factor is, we can now look at the idea of prime factors. And as I've just said, a previous video dealt with the idea of prime numbers. If you remember, what are the prime numbers? They are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so they go on. These are things you just have to learn. But what is a prime factor? Well, a prime factor is a prime number that divides into another number. And now we start using a bit of a trick. Prime factors are actually quite important later on in mathematics, but let's look at the number 60. Right? Let's say I want to split the number 60 into its prime factors. Well, what we use is something called a factor tree. All right, what we use is a factor tree, and we say, well, we write the number at the top, and we split this up into its factors. Now, most people will say, ah, oh, well, that will be 6 and 10. Well, yes, you can certainly do 6 times 10, and at the end of these branches, we have what multiplies to give 60. But I'm going to start with something more simple, and I'm going to say, well, we tend to be able to divide numbers by 2 really, really easily, because that's just the same as halving a number. So what is 60 divided by 2? It is 30. So what I now say is 2 times 30 equals 60. Notice these two numbers are here. Multiply to give that there. Well, I could now split 2 up into 2 and 1, because that's the only thing, and 2 and 1, and 2 and... But I can keep going forever. And what we tend to say is... When we get to a prime number at the end of one of the rows, 
put a circle around it, and then concentrate on going back to the other row. So 30. Can I divide that by 2? Of course I can. It becomes 2 and 15. I have a prime number at the end of one of the rows, so again, I circle it. 15 can be... Well, 2 doesn't go into 15, so let's try the next number, 3. 3. Does 3 go into 15? Absolutely it does. And what you notice here is that we now have two prime numbers and nowhere else to go. So I can say that 60 is the same as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Where did I get those numbers from? 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And if you want to do the sum, let's just check it over here. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. What's 2 times 2? It's 4. What is 4 times 3? It is 12. And what is 12 times 5? It is 60. And so 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 is 60, which in fact is the number we wanted. Mm, these factor trees are quite interesting. Let's do another one. Let's have a look at the number 70. So we split it up. Well, does 70 divide by 2? Yep, 2 goes into that 35 times. Let's put a circle around it, because 2 is a prime number. 35, does 2 go into that? No. Does 3 go into that? No. Does 5 go into it? Absolutely it does. 5 and 7. Circle around any of our prime numbers. Well, 5 is prime and 7 in prime. 70 can be written in another way as 2 times 5 times 7. Mm. Let's do one more example. Yeah, I think so. So let's do uh, 64. Well, 2 goes into that 32 times. We like. We have a prime number at the end. Put a circle around it. Carry on. Can 32 be divided by 2? Well, of course it can. It ends in an even number, so it can be divided. So 2 into 32 go 16 times. Put a circle. Move on to 16. 2 goes into that 8 times. Wow, look at this. This is quite interesting. And 8 can be divided by 2 again. And 4 can be divided by 2. Wow, almost run out of room. So I can now say that 64 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now, what do we call this in maths? Well, it's got an interesting name. It's called the product of prime factors. And the great thing is that that's actually telling us how to do this. Because product in maths, the word product, actually stands for multiply. Prime, we now know what the prime numbers are, and factors are numbers that divide in. So this is actually telling us the way to do it. It says, find all the prime numbers that divide in and multiply together. And that's what we've done. 70 is 2 times 5 times 7. 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 7 is a prime number, and we notice they are all multiplied together. So if I was looking for the product of the primes of 100, the product of primes of 100, we'll split that into 2 and 50. We'd split that into 2 and 25, and we would split that into 5 times 5. And 2 is a prime number, 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number. So 100 as a product of its prime factors is 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you've now learned about factors, which are numbers that divide in, and prime factors, which are numbers that are prime numbers and divide in. And if we want to write things as a product of its primes, this is what we do. Now, as an aside, we can write 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 in a completely different way by using index notation. Now, this might be a little bit outside the scope of this video, but index notation is just a shorter way of writing things. I'm going to say that that becomes the same as 2 with a floaty 2 times 5 with a floaty 2 as well. 
Now these little numbers here, these floaty numbers here, are called indices. So that little two there is called an indice. All right? Or as sometimes people misread as an indice. It's not an indice. All right? I tend to call them floaty numbers because they are little numbers that float. And two, with a little floaty two, is simply the same as saying two times two. If I had a two with a floaty three, that would be the same as two times two times two. And two with a little floaty four is the same as two times two times two times two. You see what I mean? So this here as two squared times five squared is the same as saying two times two times five times five, which is exactly what we wanted. So can we go back and write our other numbers in index notation? Well, let's have a look. Yes, I think we can. So for this example here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, we've got 2 and there are 6 of them. They're all multiplied together. That does not mean 2 times 6. Remember, this here is not the same as 2 times 6. It is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Can we write 70 in an easier way? No. Why? Because we don't have any repeated numbers. There is a 2, there is 1 5 and 1 7. So I can't write that any easier. I could with this one because there were 6 2s all in a row, all joined together by timeses. Could we write any of this easier? Yes, look, that's 60. I can now go back and write that 60 in a simpler way if I wanted to as 2 with the floaty 2 times 3 times 5. Why? Because those two 2's there, the 2 times the 2, can be written in a simpler way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings to the end this short video on factors and prime factors. Hope it's been of use. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.